I am met by producer Corey Rooney. You know what? It's 2024, year of the revealing. Why not? Corey is at the door, tells me what a great job I did. He's so proud of me. And then he asked me for a kiss. And I'm like, what do you mean? You know, just a little kiss. I say no. He's like, if you don't give me a kiss, I'm going to take you off all these records. At which point, gave him a little tap kiss. He says, no, I want tongue. I said, if you don't let me out of this room, I'm going to scream my fucking head off. And he let me out. And all these years, I can't help but feel like that was a big piece in why I was screwed over so badly. You can tell she was very nervous about having to tell this. It shouldn't be a surprise to anyone that J-Lo is known to have ghostwriters who steal people's music, specifically uh, vocals, and sometimes credits them or, or doesn't credit them. There's a lot of songs out there that people have questions about. But did he play a huge role in this situation as well? Check out this clip from Shantae Moore where she talks to NPR about what happened with her song and how it was stolen by Diddy, who came in and basically said, this is mine, we're going to take it or create something similar, and this is what happened. But, you know, everyone in life has career choices that they make, decisions that yes. they make. And I would like to ask you, Shantae Moore, to share with us a decision that you made that mm -hmm. was impactful, either positively or negatively. Um, J-Lo and I came out around the same time when her first album came out. And Rodney Jerkins actually came and wrote this wonderful song for me called um, If I Gave Love. And you know, the Jennifer Lopez song was If You Had My Love. He wrote the same song for her. I heard that it was because Puff Daddy walked in and said, and heard my song and said, I want that song. And he was like, yeah, well, that's already taken. You know, we wrote that for Shantae and blah, blah, blah. And he was like, yeah, mm -hmm. I want that song. So Rodney wrote really the same song honestly if you hear my song it's the really? same song oh, mine says man. if you had my love and better than give me if you had my trust would you use it against me hers i don't know i don't can't even remember because it's so close i can't even sing it right now yeah same song but we should have been aggressive instead of backing off our single because that was going to be my next single after shantae's got a man and we backed off of it because J-Lo had such a machine at the time. If you Google search J-Lo stealing vocals, you're going to find a lot of websites. One that specifically lists all the songs that J-Lo shamelessly stole from artists. I Am Real, the murder remix featuring Ja Rule. If You Had My Love, Ain't It Funny, All I Have, Get Right, Play, Love Don't Cost a Thing, Jenny from the Block, Ride or Die. So the real Jenny from the Block, which is Natasha Ramos, actually spoke on TikTok about this experience. It's kind of where her thoughts are at, especially with all this Jenny, uh, J-Lo information coming out with the release of her, I don't know, docuseries, and also with the Diddy scandal, she had a lot to say about being Jenny, being the real Jenny from the block. And make sure you guys check her out on TikTok. She's been talking a lot about the vocals and, you know, what happened with that experience. She has a two-part story. Let's watch and give some commentary. Okay, you guys. So I just got off work and I was going to come on here and be like, hey, I see your responses. Thank you so much for the support, blah, blah, blah. I know you're eager and anxious and excited. And I am too, but please have patience with me. I have two kids, two toddlers. I got two jobs. I'm a server and I sing. So mm. like the time is fleeting. Um, and I was going to try to just. Now that is some real stuff. Like that. speak of I am real. That's real right there working full time, you know, doing a side hustle for your children. That's awesome. Shout out to her. I don't know. Do it tomorrow while I'm looking crazy in the house with my kids. Um, but I'm going to just try to try to start the story now. Right. Um, I'm sure that there will be another part coming at some point uh, if I don't get to everything tonight. And if you have any questions, please feel free. Comment. OK. All right, so I don't know what year it was, 20, I mean 20, 2001, 2002, I don't know. But I had the opportunity to sing a reference track for Jennifer, Jennifer, Jennifer from the blog. Uh, a, you know, a, God, a reference track for Jenny from the blog. 
for Jennifer. A lot of people say she stole the song from me. She did not steal the song from me. That song mm. was written for Jennifer. It was called Jenny from the Block. Like, clearly it was for her. Um, so I recorded it. They, you know, they shopped it to her. She loved it. She loved the background vocals. She, you know, they told me they wanted to keep me on there and they wanted me to sing background vocals on some more songs on this album. Uh, excuse me. So I did. Um, so she did go into the studio and record some background vocals over mine. Um, I am convinced that they turned her vocals all the way down because it sounds almost identical to the reference track. One thing I did not know that they were going to do until after the song was released was keep my laugh. Like the laugh you hear on the song, that's my laugh. Like the laugh that you, when you're watching the video and there's a laugh and she laughs in the video, that's my laugh. You're laughing, kids. I love my life. And that's a um, laugh. The person saying from the Bronx, that's my voice. And they kept an ad lib. And just for the record, ad libs are not background vocals. Ad lib is 100% a lead vocal. So let's just leave that there for a second. Okay, so in regards to the negotiation and all that stuff, I 100% take accountability for the fact that I was not well versed in the business aspect of the music industry. Um, I was young, I was impressionable, and uh, my manager was trash, okay? My manager was just this random dude from Connecticut who happened to be really good friends with the producer that Whose, uh, whose production company I was signed to at the time. Uh, Back in 2019, she did tweet about this. She said, I just want to clarify something. JLo did indeed go in the studio and lay down some BGVs over mine. So I wouldn't say she's so much lip syncing. However, the backgrounds are predominantly me, some ad libs and laughs as well. Laughing, kids. Love so she sang over her song, if I'm understanding and used her laugh could she not laugh at the tracks crazy but okay um but because he was so close to him and this producer like had been in the industry i figured he knew what the heck he was doing um now i wasn't in the room for the negotiations i wasn't in the room for any of that uh after i finished recording everything for jennifer it was time for me to record my own project and I remember that they were like, oh, it's urgent for you to finish your project. So Marcus is going to go and he's going to negotiate the contract and blah, blah, blah. I'm assuming, honestly, so much time has passed by that I, there are certain details that I don't remember. Hmm. But I will say that in order for somebody else to be able to sign a contract for you, there had to be some sort of like power of attorney put in place, right? I don't know, but that's the only way he could have. All I know is that, all I remember is that I was in the studio. So did he sign the contract for her? Am I understanding this correctly? They're yeah, recording my own, my own stuff. He came back from this meeting and he tells me, um, oh, I got you $3,500. $3, I'm sorry, what? You do know I recorded backgrounds for five songs on this album. And so he got fired that day, literally mm. that night he was fired. Um, and I wanted to fight it. I was like, there's no way we have to be able to renegotiate. And I remember the answer I kept getting was the contract is already signed. So you can't renegotiate, but you know, it's okay. You take the 3,500 sometimes, sometimes you have to, you know, take less. It's for other doors to open for you. Like that's how it was sold to me. Like, yeah, you're only getting $3,500 for all this work you did. That's going to make her millions of freaking dollars. Mm -mm. But you know, maybe for her next project, she'll reach out to you for background vocals or, you know, yada, yada, yada. And me being, you know, talk about taking advantage of people. Like, come on, JLo, <laughs> JLo and people and whoever else was behind this negotiation. My goodness. Mm -mm. So this is really the real Jenny from the block right here. Okay. Young, I'm like, all right, I guess like, sure. Um, but off rip felt like immediate resentment immediately felt disheartened and heartbroken and and shitted on um hold on okay so then we go to part two all right you guys i am here to finish the story um i'm not a content creator so like am i supposed to introduce myself 
Y'all don't, a lot of y'all don't know who I am. So I will anyway. I'm Natasha Ramos and I'm the voice of Jenny from the block. Um, so like I said, I was not in the room when the negotiations were happening. And um, I have thought to myself over the years, like, I wonder if Jennifer knows I got paid so little for all of the work I did on her album. And here's the deal. I wonder if she actually cares. I don't think she does. I mean, if she did, why would she wait this? She she had to have known. I'm just saying, you know, like, does she really care? I don't think she cares. I don't think she cares. All right. And I really hope that she doesn't. I really hope that she didn't. But also, I'm pretty sure she was in the room. So yeah. there's that. But I would. Natasha, I just don't think she cares. Just say it. Shout out to you. I love how real she is, by the by the way. Um, yeah. I'll say that I know for a fact that there was this one person in the room negotiating. And I know that this person was very powerful in the dealings of this album. Hmm. And I had a situation with this person, which, um, you know, I think that. I think, you know what, let me just tell the damn story. So this was my last day recording. And um, the way that this studio was set up was like, you go into whatever studio, you open the door, that's the control room. There's another door that leads to the booth, but this studio had multiple booths in a booth. Now, Natasha, who is that powerful person that you're not name dropping quite yet? Please name drop that person, please and thank you. So like the first one was like a lounge area for the booths. The second room was like the booth for the instruments. And the third room was the booth for the vocals or something like that. But the first one was definitely like the lobby area. Um, so as I'm coming out of the booth for the last time, I am met by producer Corey Rooney. Mm. You know what? It's 2024, year of the revealing. Why not? Producer Corey Rooney. Who is that? Let's look that up right now. American producer, songwriter, partner with Drake, Beyonce, Jennifer Lopez, Diddy. Ah, okay. All right. So he has uh, written, produced, developed various successful records for artists, including Mariah Carey, Mary J. Blige. Jessica Simpson, Jennifer Lopez, Mark Anthony, Thalia, Thalia too, Destiny's Child, Michael Jackson. Oh my goodness. Uh, um, so I was met. Hold on. Wait, also before I get into this story, I just need to say I told a handful of people this story, and a couple of them know the full, the like the full story. The others only know half. And mm. this was in an effort to not be judged. I didn't tell the whole story. So here it is. Um, I just need to toss this in here too, that while I was in the process of recording all of these background vocals, there were other dreams being sold to me. Like, oh, you know, we're working on oh. a TV show about Jennifer's life when she was about your age. And, you know, we want you to play her and da 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 da, da. So like, now I also have this, like, oh shoot, this is another amazing opportunity I'm about to have. This is another door that's about to open for me because of what I'm doing here. Wow. Um, okay. Honestly, I think telling this story is stressing me out because I have hives. <laughs> I'm getting hives. Um, so anyway, Corey is at the door, tells me what a great job I did. He's so proud of me. And then he asks me for a kiss. And I'm like, what do you mean? You know, just a little kiss. I say no. He's like, if you don't give me a kiss, I'm going to take you off all these records. At which point. Get the fuck out of here, Corey. Which, by the way, he's been interviewed recently with a lot of other channels. Yo, this, <sighs> wow. Point. Gave him a little tap kiss. He says, no, I want tongue. I said, if you don't let me out of this room, I'm going to scream my fucking head off. And he let me out. And all these years, I can't help but feel like that was a big piece in why I was screwed over so badly. Actually, a couple of years ago, um, somebody reached out to me about there being a documentary produced about the making of Jenny from the Block. 
and asked me if I wanted to be a part of it or said that Corey wanted me to be a part of it. And I was like, sure, because at this point, finally, I'll be able to reap some sort of benefit from the work that I did. Um, we had a Zoom call with a few people who were involved and Corey was one of them. And it was very, very awkward for me um, having to pretend that what happened didn't happen. And like, yeah, it was 20 years ago, but still, it still uh -huh. happened. It still affected me. It's, it's still wrong. Um, so yeah, it fell through the cracks and I'm assuming it fell through the cracks because networks didn't pick it up because Jennifer was also working on this new documentary at the same time. So yeah, never got that opportunity. And um, if I'm being 100% honest with you, I definitely was also trying to figure out how and when I would expose Corey. Um, yeah, man, I don't know. It was a lot. It was a lot, but I'll be back because I'm hungry AF. I didn't eat breakfast trying to get this story finished for you guys. Um, I don't know if there's more to the story. If you guys have questions, let me know, but I'm about to eat breakfast. And if I think of anything else, I'll come back and do a part three. Wow. So... That industry is pretty dirty. Let me just say that much. So I also looked into Corey, just some other stuff that might have come about. And there really isn't a whole lot of other than just the music stuff. But I really, I'm glad she dropped that name. I'm glad she's exposing uh, a lot of this. This is just insane. So as you guys can see, Natasha Ramos is the real Jenny from the block. And even what she said about Corey and how he tried to make a pass on her probably affected her um time in the industry i don't know let me know what your guys' thoughts are in the comments and please don't forget about uh ashante moore as well who also talked about how diddy kind of came in there and swooped um that song making it similar to the other one uh i mean let me know your thoughts what do you guys think hopefully more things will be revealed rabbits out